celebrated Olympians in Canadian history. Silken Lauren is here. She is our hero for so many reasons. This is your latest. It's called My Untold Story, Unsinkable. And my gosh, is that ever true. Welcome to Breakfast Television. Thank you. So good to see you. And thank you for sharing all of this. It is a beautifully raw and real and candid story, your story, that goes deeper than what we think we know, which is on the cover. Beautiful yeah. you. We all know, of course, about your injury. 10 weeks before the 1992 Barcelona Olympic That's Games. That's right, yeah. And you happen to, you know, just go persevere and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to defy doctor's orders. Multiple surgeries later, you take home the bronze. Yeah. So after that happened, you decided to get out there, talk to people, inspire them for the next like 10 years. Yeah, well, I almost spent, I've spent 20 years um, speaking to audiences ac across North America and sharing my story and really unsinkable um, is sharing that story much, much more deeply. And that's the thing. You started, you reveal in the book, you started telling a little bit more about what you call, you know, the, the, the secrets and the, yeah. the real scars, the deep internal scars throughout your childhood leading to the woman you are today. Mm -hmm. And you figured now is the time yeah. to put it in a book. Why is now that, why are you okay with it all now? Um, I mean, in one way it was kind of leaking out. You know, I was standing in front of the audiences and as uh, we talked about earlier, you know, we were talking about the vibe in the room and how that can really draw things out. And, yeah. and I just felt it was time to really tell the right story, the, 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 not the right story so much as the, the bigger story. And I think I was ready to emotionally, I, I, you know, I'm uh, going to be 50 next year. It, God bless, yeah. you look amazing. Wow. You know, and it just felt like it t now, now is the time. Obviously, this is a very difficult material for you to have to revisit and now for your family to read. Talk to us a little bit about your childhood growing up and how it was very mentally and physically abusive. Yeah, well, my mom uh, in particular had um, many, many challenges. I mean, both my mom and my dad grew up in Germany during the war. And uh, although they don't talk very much about their experiences, um, I know they were very traumatic. And my mom um, has an undiagnosed mental illness. Um, she had incredibly erratic behavior, could be very threatening um, everything from you know the smashing plates screaming in the middle of the night to um, to threats that uh, she would kill us to the point where you talk about your brother leaving a knife under his pillow for protection and where your sister would have an escape route planned out should you need it you really lived with that fear every day yeah you know now now, now as an adult looking back you know, I think, oh, my mom never would really have done that. She was just desperate. She was so unhappy in her old life. She was lashing out, saying things that mm -hmm. maybe she didn't really mean, but she felt. Uh, but as a child, we felt a huge amount of insecurity uh, in our household. And, and that was incredibly stressful and left an impact on all of us. To the point where you needed to find control in other ways, in unhealthy ways. Yeah. You talk about your anorexia, which you developed as a teen, yeah. um, cutting as a release yeah. of the pain. Mm -hmm. So what got you out of all of that? Was it finding rowing? Was it sports? Well, it was it definitely, it started as control. You know, I, I wanted to control my life. I wanted to define my own life. I wanted to separate myself from my mother's legacy. Yeah. And so I did that by working hard and by being focused. And, and uh, but I also had this huge amount of, of energy turned inward, the self-loathing, this anger, this, that I didn't, you know, 16, 17 years old, incredibly hormonal as well. And I, and uh, w one day um, I engaged in cutting and I, I, I never cut again, uh, but it really, really scared me. It was, it was sport in many ways that redirected that energy, that mm -hmm. gave me a positive outlook, uh, not, not outlook, but a positive Just outlet it, yeah. for this, in, this intensity. So what does your mom and dad think of the book now, reading it? Have oh. they read it? Well, I, we, I had some hard conversations with my family before releasing this book. And, and it took me so long to write this book because I would constantly think about what, what my family would think and what other people would think. And finally, I just had to give my permission, myself permission to, to put it out there and to be honest. And, uh, they, you know, my, my dad um, had uh, a really angry conversation with me in, in December when um, he was reading through the manuscript. But we've worked through it. We've had a lot of conversations um, since then. And there's been, there's been a lot of acknowledgement. And, and, and in some ways, it's been very, 
very healing. Yeah. And I, I think some of the most healing is still to come. And you're helping others heal by sharing your story because there is so much shame and every family, every person can relate to, you know, at least one of the things you're talking about and dealing with other demons in their closet. So thank you so much for having the strength and the bravery to do that. And I know you are enjoying very much the support of your husband and your kids. And that all helps you, of course, keep it all together. Yes. When you're putting yourself out there day after day for interviews like this, right? Yeah, the, 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 the help and support of the people who love me make a huge difference and uh, they gave me the courage to write this book. What are you going to do for your 50th birthday? It, well, it's, still, it's, it's, it's a year away. Okay. So I have, I'll be having some fun for sure. Because go away. Kevin Frankish <laughs> is also turning 50 this year and he wants to go to Vegas. If you want to join that plane, no, I, do just... not, I do not want to go to Vegas. <laughs> Oh I don't know, Italy, Paris, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> pick it up right now in stores and online at silkenlawman.com. Also at silkenlawman, uh, Lawman rather, on Twitter. And do not forget to pick up the latest uh, issue of McLean's. There's an amazing article there on newsstands, or the digital version is available via Next Issue Canada. Thank you so much for being here and for Thank touching you. the lives of so many through being brave enough to share your story. Thank you. Right now, over to Kevin, who's turning the big five out soon. I'm trying to get her to go, come on. She's not into Vegas, Kev. <laughs> oh.